Rwanda is often known as the beautiful African country set on the hills. The East African country has in recent times, however, become much more known than that. It's been referred to as the most stable in terms of economy and also the cleanest African country in recent times. They've taken to agriculture much more seriously than a lot of their compatriots in the region and in Africa. Their president has been praised in certain quarters for what is done. They've been synonymous with genocide, which occurred in 1994. That took the lives of nearly a million people. But the transformation has been very observed. Many people who have traveled to Rwanda will come back to attest to the fact that the country has moved from the doldrums of war to become a model African country. But there has been a recent development that needs to be taken notice of and something that I would want us to discuss on this platform, something that I would want other African countries and mostly um, uh, European countries that see Africa or many people who see Africa as a place where there is essentially no hope. What Rwanda have done in recent times is to take to sports. I am a Ghanaian and I have read history of Kwame Nkrumah using sports as a political tool. And bits and pieces of evidence from what Paul Kagame, the president of Rwanda, has been doing in recent times, to me, largely, is to cement the country's position in sports. We understand from what he did in, in the last 10 years, trying to pitch alliance with top European clubs like Bayern Munich, Barcelona, Paris Saint-Germain, Arsenal, which is the Visit Rwanda concept that is trying to draw some of the top stars in world football to Kigali at the end of every year and as well sell the country's tourist sites to world football loving fans and essentially people who may watch the stars and who want to visit Rwanda for what has been advertised. But then he has moved a step further from advertising the country in terms of sports to taking a leading role, but then behind, literally taking a leading role that has not been observed by a lot and i believe it's for the long-term ambition of this and let's look into this in in the last 10 years rwanda's sports development has been incredible and i will start by going to what has been known as the biggest the biggest indoor sporting arena that is the kigali arena in the whole of east africa this is the biggest indoor sporting facility in the whole of east africa constructed at a cost of around 90 million dollars to host top international basketball volleyball and other indoor competitions and before this construction there was no such facility in the whole of east africa at least in terms of its size its prestige and architectural design so this is the kigali indoor sports center many of you may have witnessed its grand inauguration and on the night where an international basketball festival was held it's around twenty thousand capacity generally and like i said in the whole of east africa this is the biggest indoor facility only to be beaten by i mean on the continent of africa maybe in morocco or egypt and south africa so in establishing or constructing such a facility in the center of kigali paul kagami has then taken a huge step not only uh, the construction but also attracted a whole lot of interest from global basketball federation and and handball and also volleyball is being held several times in in the kigali arena and they have sold the rights the naming rights from kigali arena to the bank of kigali so it is now bk arena and that is the first step 
it's also been sold to a lot of top international musicians so in terms of sports this is the center but also there are other events like music that are held there now i will talk about the center of sports that he has set in the center of kigali the next picture you are about to watch is a very large tract of land in the center of kigali now there is a kigali arena which you watch previously this center the biggest indoor sporting facility or arena in the whole of east africa and there is the petit stade that is the small stadium so you see there's there is a small indoor stadium down there and there is also another facility up there which is a huge sports stadium that i'll come to later but then i am trying to draw your attention to what paul kagami has been trying to do in recent years in terms of sports development and infrastructure in terms of taking a bold step uh, in the infrastructure development of rwanda so this is a center of kigali within uh, walking distance now there is also pele stadium you remember when pele world pele died the brazilian football legend died fifa announced to the global federations um, member associations that they would want some of them to name their national stadium or some stadia in the country after the global football icon paul kagami took the bold step and named a stadium this after pele and because of this fifa moved the entire congress to rwanda where the uh, kigali pele stadium was inaugurated so this is also a stadium that is in kigali but i am yet to talk about the biggest that has taken the center stage in recent sporting conversations on the continent so this is a pele stadium and before the inauguration of this stadium and the renaming the president of fifa Gianni infantino moved the entire congress of fifa to kigali further cementing the position of rwanda in terms of football and then granting a lot of awards to paul kagami now the biggest is yet to come so this is the pele stadium in kigali one of the most beautiful uh, sports centers in the region as well not too big but then has been constructed and renovated purposely for the renaming of uh, uh, the stadium to meet what fifa had asked the other member federations to do beyond that this is a new stadium in rwanda in the center of the city there is a construction going on and which construction am i talking about this is the kigali amahoro stadium this is the amahoro stadium in kigali the biggest one on the left of this picture now why am i spending a lot of time on this kigali stadium so around 1994 when there was the genocide in rwanda this was a stadium where a lot of the victims and also the refugees were camped the the moderately uh, politically hutus and mostly the tutis who were under attack during the genocide were camped there to protect them from the onslaught of the bad guys so this is the stadium in 1994 but then in 2022 ahead of the 30th anniversary of the genocide paul kagame and suma construction limited in turkey signed an agreement remember i mentioned this facility already this is a kigali arena that's an indoor stadium where basketball table tennis and other uh, indoor sporting activities are held they constructed the suma construction put up this facility in conjunction with the rwandan state housing federal corporation so it was a joint venture a jv between the rwandan housing ministry and then the suma construction uh, limited but the stadium was left uh, to the rwanda housing to take charge after the construction the same company that is suma have been contracted to construct a modern stadium to move from the shape and the history of the stadium being the site of the 
infamous genocide as you see on your screen this is this the stadium amahoro stadium in kigali so in august 2022 a contract was signed between rwanda and suma construction and the housing ministry in rwanda for the construction of an ultra modern stadium so the amahoro stadium was largely a 25,000 capacity stadium not too big but it used to be the national stadium of rwanda and uh, the war uh, uh, i mean took center stage in those years it became the site of uh, oppression the site of uh, bad memories because it was a stadium that held or camped many of the uh, refugees in there then construction needs to start august 2022 it was to be done in two years so the inauguration was to be done in august 2024 to mark the 30th anniversary of the genocide you remember the genocide is exactly 30 years april this month it was in april uh, 1994 so 2004 april is exactly 30 years but the stadium was to be inaugurated in august 2024 but then on your screens you can see that this is a new amahoro stadium completely done now let's go into the details of it the construction of the stadium started in august 2022 this was a construction paul kagami had said paul kagami and the construction uh, manager uh, jean claude naimbo has said that they wanted 95 percent of the personnel constructing the stadium to be rwandans one 95 percent of the personnel constructing the stadium were to be rwandans there is not going to be uh, anybody from any country unless of course the 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 expertise required is not found in rwanda so this is what they did first constructing the stadium it was mandatory that 95 percent this is the engineer gian claude neobzima as i mentioned earlier project engineer he's a rwandan a very young guy 32 years leading the construction of the biggest stadium in east africa so 95 percent of the personnel are supposed to be rwandans native rwandans the five percent are to come from expertise or people with experience that's not found unless their experience is not found in rwanda so this is the period of the construction of the stadium and you can clearly see that majority of them uh, are, are rwanda 95 percent of them are rwandans secondly 90 to 95 percent according to the project engineer materials for the construction are supposed to be produced or manufactured in rwanda the seats the steel the roofs unless of course the 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 the, the particular project or the particular equipment is not found or is incapable of being produced in rwanda so these were mandatory in the co the contract that was signed for the construction of the new amahoro stadium not only do they want to build an ultra modern facility to meet the requirement of FIFA, it was also mandatory and required that the material for the construction of the facility should be largely Rwandan produced or manufactured materials. Otherwise, there will be the hell will break loose. You cannot import materials for the construction of the stadium when same materials are produced by companies in Rwanda. So this was an instruction according to the project engineer. He was instructed to um find ways and means of getting all the materials in rwanda so this was it and uh, you can clearly see that the the stadium is construction was was at a speed there were 2500 personnel working on the stadium at the beginning of construction 2500 personnel working day and night 2500 of them working day and night for the construction of the stadium so this is what uh, clearly uh, depicts the agency that was required for the construction of the facility in kigali now we can see from here the rates of work uh during 
the the 60 percent completion as i speak it is 90 percent done and the stadium is expected to be opened in june for the world cup qualifier between rwanda and lesotho so it has been completely done as i speak uh, this is the new amahoro stadium uh, in in kigali this is the uh, exterior uh, designs almost uh, a replica of the kigali arena and these three facilities the kigali arena the petit stadium and also the amahoro stadium are in the same vicinity like a walking distance between the kigali arena the petit stadium and also the amahoro stadium so they are trying to create what the sports minister describes as a center of sports and beyond that like i mentioned rwanda have also um brought the headquarters of the african super league can you imagine so i'm trying to point you to the direction of what paul kagami has been trying to do beyond bringing fifa congress to rwanda and building such a relationship recognizable by federations and top top international uh, mother bodies they've also brought the headquarters of the prestigious african super league which is going to be the most luxurious of uh, sporting club competitions on the continent to rwanda so FIFA, uh, the CAF and fifa have agreed to set up their headquarters in rwanda for the african super league which is yet to kickstart and going beyond that also rwanda have signed a cooperation agreement with morocco for the construction of a new football headquarters so this is part of it that is going to house the national team and also the administration of football in the country and this was an agreement between rwanda and morocco for the construction of that facility so you clearly can see the plot what paul kagami intends to do there is a clear plot of taking sports and using sports as a political tool beyond the tourism beyond the cleanliness beyond the stable economy beyond the currency beyond the agricultural development he's turned his attention to sports and building some of the most uh, modern and internationally recognized sporting facilities in the sub-region and this is something that's incredible a lot of people are losing sight and you clearly will not know what's it happening in rwanda in terms of sports but like i mentioned to you as a Ghanaian, i understand what kwame nkrumah did with sports working behind the scenes building facilities building top national teams in terms of uh, basketball volleyball boxing putting in place administrative structures that will last the test of time in terms of sports development so rwanda will gradually be picking their steps by putting up infrastructure the the most modern ones putting up the best of infrastructure across the country and bringing the headquarters of top sporting federations and uh, competitions to rwanda i mean bridging the gap between rwanda in terms of sports and the other countries because it's become very synonymous they have hosted the chan that is the championship of african nations in the country already so moving from Gen experiencing genocide becoming a country of war uh, synonymous with war and um, a lot of atrocities in in the early 90s rwanda have moved from fixing the fundamentals in terms of other areas of their economy and have now essentially moved to sports and as a sports journalist it is very identifiable very noticeable what they intend to do so if you watch the top there that is amahoro stadium in 1994 and the down the picture of the down the, the the down frame is a current vvip so the new stadium that they have constructed uh, that i showed uh, to you earlier on this uh, facility uh, in rwanda like i mentioned is um there are a lot of facilities in there that i would Security want to, to take the you international to, level uh, in terms international of level means the facility has in stock as the a project uh, supervisor has said so uh, it's increased from a 25000 capacity stadium to a, a 45000 capacity stadium one two uh, it will work 24 hours a day so it is a sports and entertainment center not only a stadium 
it has it, it has hotels and other uh, i mean accommodation facilities for guests so it is going to operate a 24 hour facility it has the biggest disability zone in the whole of east africa the biggest disability zone as in people who are disabled can enter the stadium and uh, make free movement without restrictions like um, not being disability friendly as other stadia uh, have become in africa so it has the biggest disability um, center zone it has a vvip of around um, 500 and vip of over 700 seats and the media tribune there is a um, also going to be uh, two auditoriums and terraces so it used to be a one terrace stadium uh, not roofed but now it's going to be a two auditorium in the stadium plus double terraces and the turf is going to be hybrid one of the few on the continent to have a hybrid pitch or uh, in east africa uh, to be very specific so it can be used regularly without seeing the normal wear and tear of the stadium so you clearly can see it's a 70 percent artificial 30 percent natural so it's a hybrid the most modern of uh, pitches that you can see in africa is what's been constructed in kigali this is it uh, like i also said earlier it's going to be opened uh, on the 10th of june when rwanda clashed with uh, lesotho in the world cup qualifiers i also mentioned to you about the uh, except of things that are not found in rwanda everything you see on the screen uh, are things that are clearly uh, being oh, the found cameras, in Rwanda, we have the control rooms, uh, for we, the we have the different areas specified or things that for, are for the media. In and number three, and we have you teams. About the cost. You know, uh, it cost them 170 million dollars 170 million US dollars for the construction of the stadium uh, from 2022 actually 2022 to 2024 and the uh, stadium construction was by Suma Construction uh, from Turkey. They provided part of the funds and also the housing uh, ministry in Rwanda providing part of it. So, like I mentioned to you, from the Pele Stadium in Rwanda to the construction of the Amahoro, the international uh, new Amahoro level. Stadium international uh, in, 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 in Kigali, and also uh, bringing of other top FIFA dignitaries to the country, top calf dignitaries, and the construction of the Petit Stadium, the indoor. This is the indoor stadium in Rwanda uh, that has been praised by sports loving fans for uh, the manner in which uh, it stands out and the, 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 the modernization, the concept of design and everything that, that appears to have been put into the construction of the indoor facility that's the kigali arena this is part of it v basketball there is another center for volleyball all within the kigali, uh, kigali arena so uh, from then there has also been a fifa stadium there has also been the uh, the natural uh, grass stadium in the other province of rwanda there is a lot of uh, sporting uh, federations and associations who have taken cognizance of what rwanda is trying to do in terms of sports development and the biggest one is the latest stadium that they have put up in kigali to host international matches of the national team so you will see the stadium uh, how it was in 1994 and how it has become in 2024 you clearly can see that a, a lot a lot of um, investment has gone in uh, to changing the nature and shape of the stadium so this is what i believe uh, paul kagami is trying to do like kwame Nkrumah did uh, in, in 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 the past using sports and putting in place a strong foundation for his country to gather momentum and build and sports beyond the tourism so congratulations to rwanda and i'm sure a lot of you will be hoping to follow the reopening of the amahoro amahoro stadium in rwanda is a very notable center especially in football i remember in 2004 where sante kotoko were beaten by aprfc who are going to use the, the stadium as their home venue aprfc of uh, ami patriotic of rwanda and there is also rayon sports uh, these are the two teams that are going to use this facility for their matches in kigali so that's that's it so you can clearly see from this in 1994 to this in 2004 
can only be about strong leadership and they have constructed one of the best sporting facilities uh, in terms of stadium and other sports in africa and need to be commended for such a, 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 i mean i mean uh, investment in sports which we all uh, need to take you from so congratulations to them uh, for what they've done i'm sure that there is something uh, under the everything that Paul kagami has been doing uh, with respect to sports development and the plan to get all sporting federations to become stronger reeks of using sports as a political tool economic tool like i said kwame Nkrumah in 1950s and 60s for ghana when the country was a very strong uh, on all 14s in sports so uh, this is what i've been trying to explain uh, paul kagami's new found love with sports and the incredible infrastructure uh, that is going on uh, in terms of getting the things done before they finally shoot because they had football uh, it's not as strong and they are they are they are other uh, facilities or the other sports uh, competitions are not as strong as you would want to imagine other countries but then what they are trying to do in terms of uh, infrastructure and governance will definitely yield the results uh, in the soon i mean you can't say in future uh, it will start yielding results very soon thank you very much for watching